David, your first reaction when you heard of this transaction? Um, I don't know if I could say it on the air, but I was, uh, you know, I was as, as stunned by anyone um, as I was at the WhatsApp uh, day call that I also got from your producers uh, not long ago. So, I mean, honestly, here's a guy who who really has gigantic ambitions. This was this is my first impression of him when I met him in 2006, and it remains my the strong impression of him more so, in fact, every day. I don't think it's crazy. The money is a lot, but I think when you think about really Facebook as a company whose goal is to make the world more open and connected, that's the long-term right. direction that this continues to point. Right. But David, on a financial basis, which you covered for years with Fortune magazine, on a financial basis, this is not a $2 billion transaction. It's a $400 million transaction right. with a lot of funny money attached. Is that right? right? If somebody, right. If somebody said today, if you're making billions and trading at 100 PE, you have a lot of flexibility to buy things. And, you know, it's probably the smart move in an industry that changes as quickly as the Internet does and as technology does. He's positioning. It's, it's a kind of hedge in a way, uh, but it's also a, a vision for the future that I think is in some ways extremely optimistic, which is another characteristic of this extremely unusual leader. Right. We actually want to give you a, a sense of what the co-founder and the CEO of Oculus told our Brad Stone. Uh, they sat down about a week ago before Facebook made this purchase. Take a listen. There's a lot to get it out there. Um, it's one thing to make a prototype that's in a room that can't be moved. It's another thing to make it, uh, you know, a few hundred dollars in a mass market, mass uh, consumerized form factor that you can ship out to the world. Um, so we definitely have a, a number of challenges ahead, but we're we're getting closer. David, uh, there's a lot of questions about whether virtual reality's applications can be uh, commercially viable beyond gaming. What do you think? Um, it's, it's, a, it's not even in question, in my opinion. I mean, in reality, you know, there will be future technologies. The idea of presence, of being in the feeling that you will be there with someone else in, without even really knowing, in some cases, I think in the real long distance future, whether you're really there or not, certainly the illusion, this is an inevitability, I think, in technology that's been assumed for a long time. The reason that Oculus is so important is that this is the first time that a, a, a affordable technology has emerged that really gives people that, uh, that opportunity. It's still mm -hmm. at a super early phase, but you know, you know, what the key thing to think about with Oculus is it is a platform. It's a platform that others are going to build businesses and, and services on top of, which means that if it continues to fulfill its promise, it is a gigantic opportunity. Right. It is not the same opportunity as running the Facebook service necessarily, but it is a gigantic potential business.